So we're going back and looking at limits. Um, we were looking at limits before we would come up to this form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And those were indeterminate forms. And we had to go back and manipulate that function that we were taking the limit of so that we could figure out what the limit was. So here's another way to deal with some of these indeterminate forms. And this is called L'Hopital's rule. And so this is a theorem that's going to help us find limits that are in certain forms. So let me just kind of read through it and talk th um, through what this is saying, and then we'll apply it and look at examples. So L'Hopital's rule, first of all, I think of this as hospital, but it's without that S in there before the P. Uh, help me remind me of, of how to say his name. Um, and also, hospital is where you go and get help when you're sick. And so indeterminants are kind of sick. They don't tell us what they need or what they are. And we need, we need to help them out so we can find that limit. Anyway, it's kind of a cute way maybe to help you remember. So let f of x and g of x be differentiable on some interval i containing a. Okay, so if it's differentiable, we know that it has to be continuous. There's just no sharp corners, no jumps which means it's not, um, not continuous or continuous, um, et cetera, go on. And that G prime of A does not equal zero on I for X at not equal to A. Okay, so we have a problem because right now G of X is gonna be in our denominator. And then we need to say that that value doesn't equal zero on an interval other than maybe A itself. So looking at this, if we're looking at some limit as x approaches a of a quotient f of x over g of x, and you get something in the form of zero over zero, which was one of our indeterminate forms, or you look at this limit and you get infinity over infinity, which was another indeterminate form, then as long as the limit exists, we have that the limit of that indeterminate form will be the same as the limit of the derivative of the function in the numerator, all divided by the limit of the function in the denominator. So a couple of things we need to talk about while we're doing that. Um, so if the limit exists of this quotient, that we got an indeterminate form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then it will be the same as the limit as the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. That does not mean we're taking the derivative using the quotient rule. And um, so quotient rule is different, right? So there's also a couple other things. Maybe you get negative infinity over positive infinity or negative infinity over negative infinity. Those are pretty much about the same thing. And then we'll see another version when we're going through examples today, where the limit as x might be going to positive or negative infinity. And that's pretty close to the same version what we are just doing. So there's analogous version of when a is infinity or negative infinity. So basically we're looking at the limit as x is going to positive or negative infinity instead of some particular x value. What the theorem essentially says is that if you try to compute the limit of a ratio of functions, but you get the indeterminate forms of zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then you can compute the limit of the ratios, the derivative of those functions instead. However, that um, take caution that this is not necessarily a shortcut. So when encountering limits that we have seen before, it may be faster to use different techniques than L'Hopital's rule. So remember, if we got infinity over infinity or zero over zero, um, a lot of times we could just factor or we could multiply by the conjugate of radicals. There was just different ways that we could manipulate it. So same sort of idea here. Um, and that might be easier than L'Hopital's rule. Also note that we are not taking the quotient rule. So we're not using the derivative, of, um, we're not using the quotient rule when we're taking the derivative, which I mentioned, and just take the derivative of the top and the bottom of the fraction and then leave them there.
Okay, so we've talked about indeterminate forms before. Um, zero over zero and infinity over infinity are not always um, the only indeterminate forms. We saw that there were other types also. And so L'Hopital's rule is where we would use if we got that, those forms. If they're in different forms, we can manipulate it so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. And so different ones can be manipulated different ways and we'll, we'll kind of walk through those later. But um, let me just kind of give you a couple of hints or what to do if you approach these later on. So if you get something in the zero to um, times infinity, that inter indeterminate form, rewrite this as a improper fraction. And not an improper fraction, um, a complex fraction. So whatever function was giving us zero and whatever um, we would actually want to put on the, the top and whatever function was giving us infinity, we might want to put it in the denominator. Because recall, one over infinity or one over something that goes to infinity, that was equal to zero. So we can manipulate it to get that zero over zero form. The other ones, like this one, we might want to use natural log, taking the natural log of both sides. And those are pretty much the rest of those are ways that we could probably manipulate it. So the other ones, we're going to either try taking the natural log of both sides of the equation and then looking at the limit. Or sometimes just taking e, raising um, e and raising it to the, that function. OK. So those are some ways to manipulate it if it's in those forms. So let's look at using L'Hopital's rules to help us find limits. Let me pull up an example and see if there's any questions before we get going. Okay, so this limit we are looking at finding um, the limit as x approaches zero of the function x cubed minus one, all divided by the quantity four x cubed minus x minus one. So always when we did limits, recall we went in and we did direct substitution. So wherever we see an x in our function, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna replace that with one. So here we have one cubed minus one all over four all times one cubed minus one minus three. Notice that we get one cubed minus one, which is one minus one is zero, all over. Here, one cubed again is one times four, so that's four minus one minus three, which is four minus basically four, which is zero. And so this was our indeterminate form, which didn't tell us anything. This is where we went back and we manipulated what we were working with to get it to spit out what the limit was, if it exists. So now we just used, or we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if we get this form zero over zero, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So normally I put this LH here, saying that I'm applying L'Hopital's rule. And that's where I'm getting this limit, this next limit. So I'm looking at the limit as x goes to one. L'Hopital's rule says we're gonna look at the derivative of our numerator. So the derivative of x cubed minus one, that's three x squared minus one, all over the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of four x cubed, that's 12 x squared, minus the derivative of x, which is one, and derivative of constant is zero. 
So let's go back in and do direct substitution. So wherever we see an X, we're gonna go back in and plug in one. So we have three times one squared, and then that minus one, 12 all over one squared minus one. So going in, plugging in one, wherever we see an X. Professor, would the X one be there because it, you know, the one be there? Or wouldn't that have been taken out after we did the derivative? You of are right, darn it. Dar not darn, darn it that I made a mistake. And thank you <laughs> for catching it and then speaking up right away. So, okay. So derivative of constant again is zero. So that minus one right here when we took the derivative is zero. Okay, so we have three times one squared. So that's three all over one squared is one. So 12 minus one, that gives me 11. So looking at this, we get three elevenths. So the original limit as X approaches one is three elevenths. Okay, so let's look at another example. So what if you had the limit as x is going to zero of sine of five x all over two x. So there was a way that we could have done this before by manipulating this using one of the limits we knew, sine x over x is equal to one, but Let's look at this because we get in an indeterminate form. When we go back in and we plug in zero, wherever we see an X, we get sine of five times zero, sine of zero, that is equal to zero, all over two times zero, which is zero. So let's go through because this is in the form where we can use L'Hopital's rule. Sine of five X is differentiable everywhere and sine of, or, 2x is differentiable everywhere. So L'Hopital's rule, so I'm gonna put this LH here, saying that I'm doing L'Hopital's to get to this next step. I'm taking the derivative of the numerator. So think of the numerator, we have this outer function, which is sine. So derivative of sine, we call is cosine of the inner piece, our inner piece is 5x, times the derivative of the inner. So we're using, the, again, the chain rule. So derivative of 5x is just 5. All over the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So now, again, we can go in and try our direct substitution. So wherever we see an x, we're replacing it with 0. So we have cosine of 5 times 0, which is cosine of 0, which gives us back 1 times that 5 all over 2. So this is five halves. So the limit of our original function, sine of five X over two X as X approaches zero, our Y value is getting closer and closer to where it is five halves. So not bad, right? And in a way, this is kind of good that it brings it in now because it's kind of a review of what we've done at the beginning of the semester limits. And we're approaching the end of this semester, which is um, you're going to have a final that's cumulative and we'll have questions with limits. So let's maybe look at another one. Well, definitely going to look at multiple ones. So. Let's look at the limit as X is approaching one of X minus one all over the natural log of X minus sine of pi X. So again, I always start with direct substitution. And when you do that, 
we go in here and we get one minus one, which gives us zero, all over natural log of one. Natural log of one is zero, minus sine of pi. So pi, if you think of your unit circles here, sine is your y value is zero. So indeterminate form. So let's go ahead and use Lapidus rule. So derivative of the numerator, derivative of x minus one is just one, all over the derivative of the denominator, derivative of natural log of x is one over x minus, so again, chain rule when we're taking the derivative of sine in this case, the derivative of sine is cosine of the inner pi x times the derivative of that inner piece. So derivative of a pi x is pi. Just gonna bring that pi out front of my cosine. So, now apply lock, um, the limit, go in and plug in one wherever you see an X. So we can keep one in the numerator, all over one over one, which is one minus pi and cosine of pi. Well, cosine here at pi, pi X is negative one. So it's negative one. So this is equal to one all over one plus pi. So if I just asked you and you didn't have a calculator on the exam, I would just have you leave it like this in the exact form. But on my math lab or your homework, um, it might ask you both the exact form and then also have you round. So our next example or limit is actually going to infinity and the function is x squared e to the negative x. And so notice if we go in here and we do this, we get infinity squared e to the negative infinity. Or we could rewrite this as infinity squared e to the negative infinity. Well, this is the same thing as making the exponent positive e to the infinity. If you think about your function e, right? As that goes to infinity, your values get larger and larger and larger. X values, it's shooting off to infinity. So this is pretty much infinity. Infinity squared is the same thing as infinity because it still grows all over infinity. So right here, we can use L'Hopital's rule. The thing is that this isn't a quotient, but we can rewrite this as a quotient, right? I could have started off as this limit as x is going to infinity of x squared all over e to the positive x. So now it's a quotient. Now we can apply L'Hopital's um, rule. So limit as x goes to infinity. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x all over the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. Notice when we go back in and we plug infinity wherever we see an x, we get that infinity all over infinity. So again, it is indeterminate form and we can go ahead and we can play, um, play. we can use L'Hopital's rule again. So derivative of two X is two all over the derivative of E to the X, which is E to the X. And so we get two over infinity. But recall if the denominator is blowing up faster than the numerator and the numerator staying constant in this case, this is going to zero. So our limit of X goes to infinity of X squared times E to the negative x, this is equal to zero. Uh, 
Okay, so again, limit x goes to zero, direct substitution. I notice the top, e to the zero is one. So one minus one inside that parentheses is zero, zero squared is zero. I also notice really quickly on the denominator, zero times anything is zero. They're really sign zero, zero. So we get zero over zero. So indeterminate form, it's in the fact that we can use this because our numerator is continuous, it's differentiable everywhere, and our denominator is continuous and differentiable everywhere. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, which says I need to take the derivative of the top. So when we apply the derivative of the numerator, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So our outer function, we have bring down our power to subtract one from our power of the inner e to the x minus one times the derivative of the inner. So derivative of e to the x minus one. Well, derivative of the e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of constant is zero. When we take the derivative of the denominator, notice that's a product. And so when we take that derivative of the denominator, we need to use the product rule. And so the derivative of x is one times sine of x, derivative of the first times the second plus the first x times the derivative of the second. So derivative of sine x, been using that a lot today, is cosine of x. So we're gonna go in here and we're going to plug in zero wherever we see an X and see if it falls out to some number. And so if we go in and plug in zero wherever we see an X, we get E to the zero, which is one minus one is zero. So that's gonna be zero um, times e to the zero, which is one. So two times zero times one is still zero. All over sine of zero, remember is zero, plus zero times cosine of zero, which is one. So zero plus zero is zero. So indeterminate form again. And so if we don't know what the limit is, we can apply L'Hopital's rule again. Okay, so I noticed here, hmm, we can use the product rule, or maybe before we even do that, before we even apply L'Hopital's rule, maybe we can expand 2e to the x. So let's multiply 2e to the x times this e to the x minus 1. If we do that, then we don't really have to use the product rule. So if I distribute, 2e to the x times 2e to the x. That's 2e to the, remember, same base, which our e's are, add our exponents. So x plus x, rules of exponents, that would give me a 2x. And 2e to the x times a negative 1 is minus 2e to the x. So let's rewrite that. So remember, sometimes it was easier to rewrite our function before we took the derivative to make taking the derivative a bit easier. And so let's rewrite this. This is sine x plus x cosine of x. Okay, now let's apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, I manipulate it so I don't have to use the product rule in the numerator. So derivative of 2e to the 2x, that's 2. Derivative of e it's, is itself times the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of the denominator 2x is 2 times the original e, e to the 2x, minus 2 derivative of e to the x is e to the x, all over derivative of sine x, again, it's cosine of x. When we take the derivative of the second piece, though, we're going to need to use that product rule. So derivative of the first x is one times the second cosine of x plus x times the derivative of the second cosine of x. So derivative of a cosine of x is negative sine x.
I notice I can clean it up a little bit. Um, it really doesn't matter right now. Let's just see if we do direct substitution, if we get something that falls out. If not, then let's go in and clean it up. So we have two times two, which is four, e raised to the zero power. So that's one. So this is equal to four times one, or four, minus, Plugging in zero for x, e to the zero is one times that two in front, so minus two. All over cosine zero, which is one, plus cosine of zero, which is one, plus zero times anything is zero, so plus zero. So simplifying, four minus two is two, all over one plus one, which is two. So the limit is equal to one. So for our original function, if we looked at that graph and we were looking at what was happening as x approaches zero, we would see that our y value was getting closer and closer to one. Notice x equals zero though doesn't exist, right? It's undefined there for that function because that is where our denominator is zero. So there's an open circle there, we graphed it. So now we have a limit where x is approaching zero. Um, we have e to the x plus x, that whole quantity is raised to the one over x power. So when we do direct substitution, notice that we get e to the zero, which is one plus zero. That would just give us one. And then if we raise one to the over zero, remember one over zero, that goes to infinity. It's undefined, but it goes towards infinity. And so one to the infinity power, this was an indeterminate form. And this was an indeterminate form that L'Hopital's rule didn't work. But we can manipulate this so L'Hopital's rule works. And so how we would do that is let's choose y to equal this function, e to the x, plus x, all raised to the one over x. Now let's take the natural log of both sides. And let's use rules of logs to maybe help us rewrite this. So we have the natural log of y is equal to, well, remember we can take our exponent and we can bring it down in front. So we're gonna rewrite that as one over x times the natural log of this e to the x plus x. where the natural log of y is equal to, that's the same thing as natural log of e to the x plus x, all over x. Okay, so now let's take the limit of both sides. I'm looking at as x is going to zero. Natural log of y is equal to the limit as x is approaching zero of this natural log of e to the x plus x all over x. Let me just think about this for a second. Okay, so let's just look at the right-hand side now. And let's go back in and let's go in and plug in zero wherever we see an X in here. 
And so when we do that, we get this limit, x goes to zero. Actually, implying the limit, I don't write that anymore. I have e to the zero, which is one plus one. So this is gonna give me the natural log of two all over zero, which is undefined, right? Okay, so if you plug in zero for x in here, right? E to the zero is one, but that's plus zero here, which is zero. So this is natural log of one. Natural log of one is zero. So we do get zero over zero, which is our indeterminate form. So that now, and that is in the form that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we can use L'Hopital's rule now to take this limit. So we're looking at the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of our numerator. Okay, so remember derivative of natural log. So that was one over what you're taking the natural log of, which is e to the x plus x times the derivative of what you're taking the natural log of. So derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus the derivative of x, which is one. All over the derivative of the denominator, which is one. So looking at that, we have the limit x approaches zero of e to the x plus one all over e to the x plus x. And I really don't have to put that one in the denominator. So let's see if this falls out. So now if we go in and we plug in zero wherever we see an x, we get that this is equal to e to the zero is one plus one, so we get two in the numerator, all over e to the zero, which is one plus zero, so one. So this is equal to two. We didn't want the, the limit as x approaches zero of the natural log of y. We wanted the limit of y, limit as x approaches zero of y. And so we can do this where we look at raising both sides. We're gonna look at e of the natural log of y equals e squared. So that would give me what I really wanted in the beginning, the limit as x approaches zero of y is equal to e squared. And recall, y is what we had chosen to be what we were taking the limit of. So we have the limit as x approaches zero of this e to the x plus x all raised to the one over x. This is equal to e squared, which let's get what that approximately is. Oops, second. We get approximately 7.4. So I pulled up Desmos just to make sure I was doing everything right. And that's where I wanna show you that's what we got. So if we were looking at the limit of this function, notice as X is approaching zero, we're getting a Y value 
you can kind of see it in here, which was that that e squared, seven point something. It's not giving me the exact value, but you can see what it's about what we got. Okay. So you have, it has to be in a particular form in order to use L'Hopital's rule. If it's not in that indeterminate form, there's ways that we can sometimes manipulate it to give us that form of L'Hopital's. And so there was an example of doing that. Okay, so this limit is x is approaching zero from the right of x times the natural log of x, and that natural log of x is quantity squared. So if you look at, at just the first piece, x, as x is approaching zero, that is going to give you back zero, right? If we look at the limit as x is approaching zero of this second piece of the natural log of x, let's ignore the square for a second. If you remember what the natural log of x looks like, you have a asymptote. And as x is approaching zero on the right, it's going down to negative infinity. And so this is going to give me negative infinity, right? Quantity squared. Okay, so this would give me zero times infinity, which is an indeterminate form. But it's not the right indeterminate form to be able to use L'Hopital's. And so we want to manipulate this. So if you get something where it's zero times infinity, the way to manipulate that is to try to rewrite that as a complex fraction. So how about let's look, rewrite this as x all over, and I'm not, sometimes you don't know which one to do. Um, so let's just try it with x in the numerator all over one over the natural log of x quantity squared. So that's identical to what we have above, right? If you think of x divided by one over this natural log of x quantity squared, invert multiply, we get the same thing as we originally started with. We just manipulated it, and a lot of times we, we do that in mathematics, don't we? So it gets us to what we want. Now, if we plug in zero, we get zero all over, well, one over infinity squared. Well, one over something going to negative infinity squared, that's one over infinity. One over infinity goes to zero. So now we've manipulated it where we get the indeterminate form where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule, which says this would get us the same thing as if we look at the limit of the derivative of the numerator. So actually, before we do that, let's rewrite this a little bit before we take the derivative just to make our life a little bit easier. One over the natural log of x quantity squared is the same thing as natural log of x, right, raised to the negative 2 power. That way I don't have to use the quotient rule and the chain rule. I can just use the chain rule when I take the derivative of the bottom. Just makes my life a little bit easier. So derivative of this x is 1 all over the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of the denominator using my chain rule the outer function is this raised to the negative two. So bring down my power negative two of the inside, subtract one from my power. So negative two of natural log of x, natural log of x is raised to the negative three power. But don't forget, we need to take the derivative of the inside. Derivative of natural log of x is one over x. 
but let's clean it up a little bit. So we have a limit, x is approaching zero. I can think of this as bringing it down to the denominator. So this would give me one all over negative two all over, I'm going to put the x out front, x times the natural log of x quantity cubed. Which if we think of that, this is in burnt multiplying like I was showing you before, this is the limit as x is approaching zero of, so let's flip it up, x times the natural log of x quantity cubed all over negative two. So I think we have a problem because looking at this, we're getting the same thing that we did before. I plug in zero as it's coming into the right, I get zero times the natural log of zero, which is infinity. And so we have a zero times infinity again. So it looks like I probably chose the wrong thing to put in the numerator and denominator because I can see that this loop is gonna continue to happen. Because every time I take the natural log of X, I'm gonna get this one over X and we're always gonna have this. Okay, so let's rewrite this. And we need to rewrite it. So one function is in the denominator, the other function is in the numerator. So we're gonna keep the natural log of X squared in the numerator. So we have to be able to rewrite it where the other piece is in the denominator. So if we do that, we can rewrite it by one over X. The difference here, when we take the limit as X is approaching zero on the right, we don't get zero over zero. As we approach zero on the right, we're getting this negative infinity quantity squared, which is infinity, all over one over something going to zero is going to infinity. So we have it so that we can use L'Hopital's rule again, because we have the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So take the derivative of the numerator. We saw that that was two natural log of x times one over x using the chain rule. And let's think of one over as x as x to the negative one power. So derivative of x to the negative one power is negative one times x to the negative two power. And I forgot my limit, which I should not drop yet. So let's clean it up. So this is two natural log of x over x. all divided by negative one over x squared. Let's rewrite this. So it's not a complex fraction. So we have two natural log of x all over x divided by, which is times the reciprocal. So this will be negative x squared. If you want to think of it as over one, you can. Are we getting the same problem again, guys? So now we're going to get zero over zero, actually. Okay, no, we're not. It's just that we're going to have to apply it multiple times. So here, x cancels with one of them here. So we have, we can rewrite this as negative two x natural log of x. 
So unfortunately, we do still get an indeterminate form. We still need to rewrite this. So let's rewrite it. So let's keep the natural log piece in the numerator. And let's bring down the other piece. So we can write the other piece as one over negative two x. You know what, let's pull the negative two out front just using rules of limits. We can pull a coefficient by rules of limits out front. Okay, so that is identical to what we have above. Now, if we look at the limit as x is approaching zero, we've got it in the form of infinity over infinity. So indeterminate form, that one that we can use Lapidus. The derivative of natural log of x is one over x, all over, and now the derivative of um, x to the negative one, which we said, we did that before, um, was negative one over x squared. Well, let's rewrite it. So rewriting it in one over X times the reciprocal negative X squared. This is gonna give us back just negative X. So now looking at this, when we go in and we plug in zero, that's gonna be going to zero. So we have negative two times zero which is equal to zero. So if we were gonna look at this graph, if we looked at the graph of y equals x, natural log of x quantity squared, what we were just looking at is the limit as x is approaching zero on the right-hand side, we should be getting back a y value of zero even though it is not defined in the original function. So if we look at that graph of that function we were looking at, you see what we had just found, that as we were getting closer and closer to x equals zero, on the right, that our function was equal to zero, even though it's undefined at zero can't have natural log of zero. So now we're given that the limit is x is approaching zero on the right of square root of x all over the square root of sine x. And it was nice because the directions told us that Lapidus rule will actually not work. We would just keep on um, getting in a, a pattern where we ha would have to keep on using it and would just keep on going. And so it told us that we need to find this some other way. We'll recall that the limit as x approaches zero of sine x all over x, that was equal to one. We can manipulate that, this to look like that. So let's do that. This is a limit as x is approaching zero from the right. I can rewrite this as the square root of x over sine x. Those are equivalent. I also know that I can rewrite this with an exponent. So it's the same thing as one half power. And if I want to flip it so it looks like sine x over x, I can just change my exponent to negative. So this is the same thing as the limit as x is approaching zero of sine x all over x raised to the negative one half power. So now I can use my rules of limits. So basically I can take the limit 
of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator and then take that negative one half power. And so this is the same thing. That's what I was just saying, where we can bring it inside first. And so now we can use that fact that the limit as x is approaching zero of sine x over x is one. So we get one all raised to the negative one half power. Well, one raised to any power is one. Any finite power. Okay, so there was an example where Laplace's rule didn't work. And I didn't want to take the time showing you and going through that loop cycle where it kept on giving us an indeterminate form just because we're almost out of time. So that is um, 4.5 in our textbook. And we'll jump into applied optimization tomorrow.